Welcome back to a very spooky episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today is Friday the 13th in October. I mean, I absolutely had to make a video. Uh, you and nine friends are spending the summer holidays at Camp Crystal Lake. Um, at Wait, at Crystal Lake Holiday Camp. <clears throat> wait, what? I thought Crystal Lake was a summer camp. Miles away from civilization, unaware that Jason Voorhees has a filthy gr wait has a filthy grotto close to the camp? So he has like a is like a hot tub party locale. Um at midnight on the first day while unpacking, you notice a bloodstained mask with <coughs> horror. You realize that Jason is waiting. Terrified, you must protect your friends from the marauding Jason and finally dispose of him before he disposes of you. Press any key to continue. All right. I have no idea what this game is about, but we're about to find out. It is, of course, Friday the 13th on Friday the 13th. Brought to you by Friday the 13th. That's a pretty good, good uh, opening little uh, title screen there for a Commodore game. Um, okay, so like all Commodore games, usually you have no idea if it's stalled, loading, or you just don't know the keys. So I'm presuming <laughs> that it's still loading. Jeez, good for coffee here. I think I'm so afraid, so terrified by the game that is about to come that I have no idea what to do. All right, I pressed buttons until something happened. The Commodore 64 makes me feel like a conspiracy theorist because I'm like, I never know if it's the button I pressed or just enough time has passed, you know? Like, again, you never know if it's loading. I think if you were to redesign the Commodore 64, even back in the day, I would just add, like, a little blinking light in the bottom right corner of the screen that blinked green and red back and forth if the game was loading. That's all you have to add to the game. Although I guess some Commodore 64 games had the border of colors that just went apeshit whenever you loaded a game and it looked like a rainbow seizure. But anyway, Friday the 13th, can you find and kill Jason before he can kill you? I'm Gary King. Gary has a taste for adventure. He would never refuse to help anyone and is a natural leader. He uses his combination of strength and intelligence with great success. But what is his hidden weakness? Could it be bullets? Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Look at these graphics. Okay, now what are the keys? I have no idea. Also, I think I have no weapon. I think I might be carrying a dumbbell, though, or something. Wait, am I in, like, a church? What the heck? This is giving me, like, E.T. vibes. Hey, there's a farmer. Can we talk to her? Oh, there's a pitchfork. Okay, hold on. Oh, I got it. Can I attack now, is the question. But yeah, I'm getting, like, E.T. vibes out of this one. I don't know what you guys think. Oh, God, the... It's also, like, a bit of King's Quest. Oops. <coughs> Old McDonald. I never thought that you could put Old McDonald in a Jason Voorhees game, but I guess you can. What does this do? Okay. There's a, there's a religious cross here. Does this do anything? I have a religious cross. I, I feel like this game requires some sort of, like, puzzling that I'm going to have no idea about. Uh, okay, I have a cross. Maybe it can go, like, in the, the gravestone or something? This music is so bizarre. I am not getting, like, a Friday the 13th vibe. All you need... Like, they, they put so much effort into the music for this game. Here's what you need, guys. Like, that's it. Instead, they're, like, recreating the national anthem from, like, 1935. Like, the heck is this? This, this honestly feels like a King's Quest game. No Friday the 13th at all. Is this a teddy bear picnic? It's the goddamn teddy bear effing picnic in a Friday the 13th game. What the fuck? What? What's coming next? This this is like the developers had 
30 songs that they programmed for various other things, and then they got contracted to make a Friday the 13th game. So they just, like, F it. Like, they just threw it in. It didn't make any sense. Okay, we now need to go and see Friday the 13th, the movie, recut with these songs. Like, not the Commodore... Oh, is that Jason? Somebody just straight up got murdered. Wait, and then it turned into me. What the... What, what just happened? You just murdered that person. You show no regret. Follow this guy. Oh, it's Jason. Where'd he go? There he is. Attack him with the cross, man. What is he, vampire? We'll get you, buddy. But anyway, we need to see, um... Friday the 13th. Recut with the Teddy Bear Picnic song. Um... Like, authentically. Like, not the Commodore 64 version of the Teddy Bear Picnic. I can't even... I can't drop this cross now, by the way. I used to be able to pick up chairs and stuff, but I can't now. Um, yeah, just just imagine Jason Voorhees hunting to the Teddy Bear Picnic. Or Old McDonald. Throw that one in for good measure. Um, well, I have literally no idea what I'm doing here. Like, literally... No idea. Oh, here's a house we haven't seen. This is like just random free music. Hey, this house is pretty big, actually. Kind of some cool environments in here. There's a sword. Oh, wait, did I get it? Oh, I got it. For the love of God, how do you attack? Okay, hold on. We gotta look up a manual for this. This is just pathetic. I think someone just got killed, by the way. Okay, I looked up a, a, a manual that said you have to use the joystick and press left or right, and then press the button, otherwise you just drop your weapon. But enter seems to be uh, to drop the weapon. But if I'm holding the keyboard, it doesn't do anything. So, I don't know. I just picked up my joystick too, but it's not being detected, so. Or maybe this is a weapon? No, I just drop it. Uh, once again, you know Hey, wait, that was a bathroom, by the way. Look, there's like a toilet in there. Um, one of my other complaints about the Commodore 64, um, since we're going there, is that uh, it only ever had one button on this joystick. And as a result, it had these like really annoying controls where it's like you press the button on the joystick to drop and pick up a weapon, but if you're holding an, a direction and you press the joystick button, then you attack. But it's like in the middle of combat, you might accidentally press the joystick and it won't detect that you're holding left or right, so you drop your weapon mid-combat. And it's like kind of ridiculous, you know, like... It's odd, like the Nintendo only had four buttons. I mean, it had A and B, but it also had start and select, so it had four buttons. But even if, even if you just had two, I think it exponentially opens up possibilities with gaming. And if you have four like the Nintendo... Like, the Nintendo's in a very sweet spot, but I think... The Super Nintendo really just... I, I feel like most games... Um, until you start to get into like the really complex polygonal games and stuff... You can get away with the Super Nintendo controller. And many indie games, even today, you can. Um, here's the church again. Go uh, pray and have some holy sacraments. Oh look, it's the... Uh, <laughs> it's the wedding song! <clears throat> Can Jason come and murder me now, now that we're playing Here Comes the Bride? Or whatever. Oh, and the Dracula song? Get in here, you! Just every- literally every song we can think of, let's just play it. They're, they got both songs that are highly associated with churches. They got the wedding song and the Dracula song. Often those songs are played back to back. So, you know, why, why not? Um, I have to say that <laughs> the musical choices in this game are some of the most bizarre I have ever seen in my life. Like, I'm not joking. I don't know what would make a weirder musical choice, but these are the weirdest choices ever. I'm convinced the developers just needed music and had nothing, so they just threw in whatever they happen to have. I, I'm, I'm convinced that's, that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Um... But, you know, aside from that, it is actually kind of an interesting exploration game. You got multiple environments and stuff like that. You do very much have that sort of E.T. vibe or King's Quest almost. 
And I will say that maybe if we could actually attack, it would be a little different. But it kind of feels like not a great game. I don't know. It's hard to say. I think by today's standards, of course, it's not a good game. But even back in the day, I don't know. I, this music reminds me a bit of Oregon Trail now. I guess if we could attack, it would be a different story, but I still don't know if I'd be over the moon for this game. So, yeah, interesting game. I think, honestly, the the Nintendo, their version of the Jason Voorhees Friday the 13th game is way scarier and uh, just way... It's sort of got a creepy vibe to it. When Jason does show up, it is quite terrifying. Um, it is an exploration game like this, and, you know, people give it crap for, like, not being able to figure your way around. But at least it doesn't have the teddy bear picnic song in it. And this is also confusing. Like, I, I cannot figure out where I am most of the time for the life of me. I mean, I guess <clears throat> it's not that complicated, but... It's one of those games where if you go to the left long enough, you end up on the right. Like, it loops around, and I kind of don't like that. I wish it just had a border. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, my God. The game is killing me. I'm dying. He's slowly killing all my friends. I just want to stick around and see Jason now at this point. Um, you know the best Friday the 13th game, though? I would argue is not a Friday the 13th game. It's Splatterhouse, where you play as a, a hero who <clears throat> wears, like, a purple Jason mask, and you slam ghouls and monsters against a wall with a 2x4 until they explode. That's a fun game. <clears throat> I think you can also get a shotgun in that game and blast people. Hi, you know what? They were playing the teddy bear picnic song. I kind of want to go back to that. I think it was, if you go into the woods here, they'll play it. <laughs> oh my god. Why? Why, developers? Even if this was the only music you had around, don't put it in your goddamn Friday the 13th game. You know, they did all this effort on the title screen to give you, like, that cool mask shot. And then it's like they were smoking crack for the rest of the time. I mean, like, I don't know how to describe it. It's crazy. You see Jason, like, you know, lurking in the woods. He's up to hijinks. He's going to go slay some camp counselors. Today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic. Blah! And he jumps out and, like eviscerates you. Let's pick up this sword. We'll defend ourselves. I think this is a chainsaw or something. Wish I could use it. No idea how. Oh dear, you ran out of time before you found him. I got 260 points for what? <laughs> I just got him. Alright, well, we're not playing any more of this nonsense. <laughs> you know, I sat down... Because I had the Commodore 64 Friday the 13th game on a list of games to play for a long time. And I looked it up, and I couldn't remember why I put it on this list, but I must have read somewhere that it has, like, the Teddy Bear Picnic song in it, and the Dracula song, and the Here Comes the Bride song, and it just makes no sense. I probably wrote it down like, oh my god, you have to play it. But I forgot. I totally forgot. Now that I'm playing it, I'm like... This is this is the, one of the weirdest things I've ever played. Friday the 13th on the Commodore 64. Maybe it's an interesting game. I think it's utterly bonkers. What do you guys think? And uh, other than that, don't get murdered. It's Friday the 13th, right? So play it safe, guys. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick little look at one of the most bizarre Halloween games out there. And uh, other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Till next time, folks. Peace. If you go down in the woods today, you're sure of a big surprise. If you go down in the woods today, you better go in disguise. For every bear that ever there was will gather there for certain because today's the day the teddy bears have their picnic.